Well, good evening. I'm Linda Hodgkins, and I'm so honored to be up here. I'm convinced that there's many of you in the audience that could be up here in my place. So I'm just honored and privileged that it's me and hope that I can um, bring you some, some hope for quality programming if you're struggling with that at your facility. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about the growth that I've seen in the recent program that I've been leading for the past three years in standardizing our lymphedema program. And I've broken this down into three stages that I'm going to talk to you about. The first is just over the past 20 years, the journey that I've had in doing different lymphedema protocols myself. Then I want to make a case to you uh, for an intensive and comprehensive treatment model. And then finally, I want to tell you about the growth that we've seen and the benefits we've experienced at Hartford HealthCare through standardizing our program. So the first stage of this journey is the treatment protocols that I've experienced um, in the last 20 years. So I started out doing lymphedema in a large rehab hospital in Connecticut and um, was there for eight years doing lymphedema for five. And I'll tell you about that protocol. I then opened a private practice that exclusively treated lymphedema for 11 years. And I'll tell you about the protocol there. And now for the past three years, I've taken that protocol from private practice and partnered with a very large healthcare system of about 20,000 employees. And I'll tell you about um, how that's been going. From 1998 to 2004, I was in this large rehab hospital. They had just started a lymphedema program. I joined two other therapists that were already doing lymphedema. And our treatment protocol was that we were seeing patients twice a week for CDT. Uh, we issued our patients two sets of bandages at no cost. We used either a cotton or a soft foam for our under uh, layer, for both the arm and the leg. And at the end of the treatment protocol, we were supplying the patient with a list of DME that could measure and fit for garments, um, and the patient was then discharged um, with that instruction to do that. And we didn't have a formal follow-up program. It was, if you have any problems, you can come back and call us. So some of the deficiencies of this protocol were that patients didn't make a lot of progress, um, other than stage one patients, stage two and stage three. They were swelling up in between sessions. And we tried to teach them to bandage themselves. We had husbands learning how to bandage their wives, but it really wasn't successful in managing their lymphedema. We also saw that a lot of our patients didn't end up getting the garments that we had recommended. They, whether they didn't truly understand the need or um, would go out and get one but was never trained how to put it on or take it off and felt that it was uncomfortable, um, we just saw a lot of patients fall off. I think they were communicating to their doctors a lot of times that CDT didn't work, that they tried CDT and that it had failed. As far as the bandages, we also saw that patients didn't always value the bandages when we gave them to them. They'd sometimes show up and, oh, well, I left those at home. Just give me another set. Didn't quite understand how expensive these bandages were. So that's sort of where we were at at the rehab hospital. I had just finished taking the full CDT class. I was studying for the LANA exam. This was around 2004. And I was realizing more and more as I was reading on the internet and, and looking at other people's experiences that what I was doing didn't work and that I, I, wasn't, I wasn't taught to do it that way. That the class that I took, that the LANA exam had prepared me for something very different than what I was doing. So I approached the hospital. I asked them if they would be willing. I, I wrote a business plan, even though I had no idea what I was doing, and um, wanted to do five day a week CDT. And they looked at the numbers and said it really just wasn't profitable enough for me, to, for them to invest in that. And they really were not interested in doing anything more than we were currently doing. And so it was very discouraging to me. And I felt like I was at a crossroads in my career. I couldn't keep doing lymphedema the way I was doing it. It was just not fulfilling to me. And I didn't think it was fair to the patients. And so um, I remember very distinctly a conversation with my husband one evening and he said to me, Linda, is there any place in our community that if somebody has lymphedema, they can go and get proper, properly treated? And I said, no, there really isn't. And he said, then we have no choice. Like, we have to do this. It's kind of like a mission. 
And so that was it. Our family, with three small children, committed to opening a private practice that was going to do things conservatively the way I had been taught in my class to do. But I want to just pause for a minute. And as I know many of you have people who really um, impressed upon you the values that you hold dear. And there were many people that impressed upon me the value of doing quality CDT. And one of the first ones very early in my career was Dr. Janet Friedman. And she's here tonight. Uh, and you're going to hear from her in a minute. I heard her lecture a couple of times when I was a new therapist. And her passion for quality CDT, uh, she was very no-nonsense and very firm about how patients would do well. And that made a really strong impression on me. And she was one of those people in my you know, 20s that I, I wanted to emulate her. I wanted to be like her. And I wanted to have the kind of results that she talked about having. Um, I went to an advanced class with close training. They used to do a, a two-day advanced training under Jan Weiss. And um, she was just such a phenomenal instructor so intelligent, so committed to research. She made such a good impression on me, and we really hit it off. And over the years, developed a friendship, and eventually, she recommended me to Gunther to become faculty. And that was another huge impetus in my career in wanting to do things well. Um, teaching something, as you know, really makes you learn it. And so that was a huge um, impression on my career. And then Gunther gave me the opportunity to go to Germany and study at the Foldy Clinic. And I was able to study under Professor Foldy and hear her lecture um, and actually follow her therapists around for a week and learn from them. And um, in, a little, in a few slides, I'm going to tell you one of the things Professor Foldy said when I was there about American therapists that also really motivated me to do things well. So I first want to introduce you to um, Dr. Friedman from Connecticut and hear from her. And, and I know that when you hear from her, you'll see why I wanted to emulate her. I'm a physiatrist, and traditionally we did treat lymphedema, treat with compression pumps. And I was working in New York City, big tertiary care hospital, and saw a lot of women with lymphedema, some very extreme stage four scary disease. And one day I was at a medical conference of women physicians I go to every year and the friend I would share my hotel room with who had had breast cancer takes this plastic bag out of her suitcase with bandages and she starts wrapping her arm. And I say to her, Susan, what are you doing? And she tells me the whole story of complete decongestive therapy and Dr. Lerner who was her doctor. And Dr. Lerner worked probably five or six blocks from my hospital, so I proceeded to go over there to see this because I was really intrigued with the whole treatment. It really spoke to the kind of treatment I like to do, hands-on, um, low-tech kind of treatment. So that's how it sort of started, and Dr. Lerner, who was a surgeon who had brought this treatment over from Europe and set up a treatment clinic in Manhattan, sort of lectured me about it and taught me all about it. And I really wanted to do this. I really wanted to incorporate that into my practice. So a couple of years later, I moved to Connecticut to a smaller community hospital and convinced them to train two therapists in complete decongestive therapy. And that's, sort of, that's how it started. So you know, Dr. Lerner was doing the true European treatment, as I call it, twice a day, five days a week. People would come, check into a hotel if they didn't live in the city, because he would not treat you if you did not do that. So people took a month off of their life to get treatment there. And he was very, very strict about that's what you had to do. But when I was up in Connecticut starting, it just was unrealistic. Um, we were billing insurance, so that was going to be difficult. So we decided, or I decided, to see how it would go with just once a day, five days a week. And people got pretty good results. So very quickly, we developed a very long waiting list for treatment. There were people all over Connecticut and New York who'd never been treated. And when they would hear about this, they would come see me. And we probably had a six to eight month waiting list. So we trained a third therapist 
who worked directly for the hospital who would not let her work for us more than three days a week. So we started that and her patients came three times a week and they just really did not get the results that the five day a week treatment patients did. It was dramatically different. Um, they would get some improvement, but you know, just I would say half or sometimes even less than that. Plus she was treating patients for much, much longer. So our um, five day a week therapist would treat people probably three to four weeks, but our three day a week therapist would be treating people for six to eight weeks and really getting far less of a clinical result. And it was really, you know, for me, a great little in-house experiment that just happened inadvertently that we saw the value of this just has to be at least five day a week kind of treatment. So since then, that's what I've done. And, um, you know, if, patient, if patients can't come five days a week, I often will not treat them because it's just not worth it. It's just not gonna be the commitment they need. Some patients will let skip Wednesdays. I feel at least that's four days a week without a, with just a one day gap, but less than that, no. You've just got to make the commitment to do it. So that's sort of how I establish that as really needing the five, at least the five day a week treatment. Since we started, it's been great how many more therapists there are all over the state. And I do see a lot of patients from outside of my immediate area who want to come to see me just for a lymphedema consult. And often on my schedule, the secretaries will put in a reason and often they're putting in treatment didn't work as their reason. So patients come and I have them tell me their story and they tell me they had treatment and I have to ask them, what did you have? And they said, oh, I had you know, massage and wrapping. I go, well, what did you have? Tell me exactly what it is. And a lot of people are coming to me having done three months of treatment two times a week, sometimes once a week, sometimes three times a week. And they've been wrapped or what I would call partially wrapped. And some people are actually told to take the bandages off that day or the next day. Or if they're told to leave them on, they don't last two to three days. So the bandages have come off anyway. So, you know, I look at people, I say, you know, you know, you didn't really get treated. And I always hate to say that because I feel I'm ratting out their therapist who may be very dedicated and skilled, but is really, is not doing the treatment. I think that I've seen in this time, what I call the dumbing down of, of lymphedema treatment where for a variety of reasons, therapists are doing very inadequate, very insufficient partial treatment. And of course, it's not gonna work. Some people may get some results, but they're not getting anything like the clinical results they should be getting. And a lot of people are getting very minimal results and they're really thinking the treatment doesn't work. Why did I do it? And I've now also used up my insurance visits for the year. So we're sort of stuck. You know, Where do we go from here now other than wait until they have visits or try to get more visits for them. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a very distressing thing to me as a physician, as someone who's really dedicated to treating lymphedema, to see what's going on around, I don't blame Connecticut, I think all over the country where therapists are, are doing treatment two or three times a week. And they're not telling the patients that that's not the real treatment. And that's something that's always surprised me, you know, that a lot of people think this is it. And it's and it it's not. <laughs> Say hello, Dr. Freeman. Thank you. Okay, so 2004, um, my family opened a little business called Therapy Lymphedema Center, and we had some core values that we were going to stick to. And one was seeing patients with stage two and three lymphedema five times a week. I wasn't prepared for how different the results were going to be. It really was beyond my expectations. I also was committed to doing bandaging that was as aggressive as I could be so I could get patients done quickly. So I was committed to custom cut foam panels, half inch for the leg, quarter inch for the arm. Again, just what we were taught in class bandaging the fingers and the toes, bandaging the feet. This is all what we were taught, but what I'm finding as I teach around the country is it's not usually what's happening. We also, at Therapia, were providing compression garments for all of our patients. We still work with DMEs, let the DME bill for insurance, 
but we were measuring, fitting, and training, most importantly, our patients. So then when they leave us, they know how to use the garment. The garment's comfortable, it fits. Now they have a chance of a long-term uh, outcome. And I really love focusing on the environment. I love creating a space that's therapeutic for my patients. So I'm gonna introduce you to Therapia. I will tell you my husband painted all of those walls. <laughs> and our boys had to work there, doing laundry and various things. But there was a real emphasis on creating a therapeutic environment that patients really looked forward to coming to. And not only was it good for the patients, it was good for the therapists. Something to consider when you look at your space. Some of the successes at Therapia, we were getting great results, and because of that, we had more patients than we could treat. We had developed a good reputation in the community, both with physicians from various hospitals and a following from our patients. The biggest barrier, I'm sure you can guess, insurance reimbursement in private practice is very, very low. And because we were such a tiny little practice, we had no negotiating skills with insurance companies. So we couldn't compete as we needed more therapists to meet the demand of our patient, patient, uh, patients growing. We couldn't compete with a hospital salary. We couldn't compete with the benefit packages that they were giving therapists. So our waiting list was getting longer and longer. Um, and at some point we knew we had to partner with someone in order to meet the demand and to really affect change on a larger scale than we were currently able to do. So I looked around at different healthcare organizations in Connecticut and um, started to meet with Hartford Healthcare and um, they described their core values which really mirrored my own. And um, the executive director, who happens to be a physical therapist, said to me, we can't be good in every niche therapy. What we like to do is find someone who has garnished respect in the community, who we think is an expert in the field, and then give you the reins and follow your lead. Well, that was music to my ears. Um, they had a focus on evidence-based practice, looking at an expert in the field, what's in the literature, and then combining that with patient satisfaction. The other thing I've been really happy and impressed with is that we all know productivity is usually the driving force behind most, most healthcare. Um, but what they believe is that if you have clinical excellence and good outcomes, then the customer will come to you and they'll keep coming back to you. That that's going to win a customer. So I wanna, this is a brief clip, I wanna introduce you to our Vice President of Operations, who happens to be an occupational therapist, um, talk about the shared vision that, that we have. When I think of our lymphedema program, I think it's very consistent with the core values we have within Harford Healthcare. And those are that we have excellence, and you think about having this program, having uh, standard care that really based off of literature and best practice. When you think about integrity, doing the right thing for these patients, many of these patients may have gone a um, long time being untreated and having several complications. Uh, when you think about our value of caring and saying what's the um, best thing and the most caring thing we do to these patients, allowing them to regain some of the functions that they, they haven't had because of their lymphedema challenges. And when it comes to safety, doing the safe thing again, having that standardized care that's really based on best practice. So I partnered with Hartford HealthCare and I had the task of standardizing their lymphedema program. They had a lymphedema program and trying to grow it across the state of Connecticut to meet best practice. So as I approached this task, it took me a good year just to figure out who was treating lymphedema. Like I said, this, there's 20,000 employees across the state of Connecticut in this healthcare organization. Um, so through some surveys and some site visits, I uh, was able to sort of figure out who was treating, and I wanted to know, well, what protocols are you using? How are you bandaging? Where do you get your supplies? Um, are you treating upper extremity and lower extremity? And after months of collecting sort of data and trying to figure out where we were at, um, 
I found that we were all over the map, depending on the site. And we had five therapists that were not certified lymphedema therapists that were treating lymphedema. They were treated in like an upper extremity weekend type class, and they were just treating upper extremity. Most of them were not using bandaging as a regular part of CDT. Garments were not a regular part. Uh, the patients were sent out to get their garments. Um, and we had no formal follow-up procedure. Um, each site was sort of inventing their protocol. So what I wanted to do, my goal was to replicate what I had found that worked at Therapia in this very large system. And I came up with four pillars of standardization that I thought were non-negotiables. One is that we could only have certified lymphedema therapists treating our patients. The second was I was convinced of the five-day-a-week protocol for stage two and stage three lymphedema. I wanted every therapist to be a certified garment fitter and to measure, fit, and train our patients on garments as a standard part of CDT. And finally, that the patients would be coming back for follow-up visits that we would initiate. So this first stage of my journey, I have described to you two very different protocols. For five years, I treated patients twice a week with a not very aggressive bandage. I did not get involved in garments. And I've compared that to the protocol that I've done for the last 14 years of five-day-a-week CDT, measuring for garments, and doing regular follow-up. So the second stage of this discussion is I want to make a case for why I think an intensive and comprehensive protocol is the best way to treat patients with lymphedema. So to do that, I'm gonna introduce some of my therapists at Hartford Healthcare, and I actually have five of them here tonight. Can you say hello? Um, they have been so supportive and so lovely. My husband and I came into our room last night and had chocolate-covered strawberry, champagne, and cheese and crackers from these lovely women. Um, so, meet some of our therapists. The benefit of the five-day-a-week protocol is the result. I can't believe how quickly I've seen patients reduce from within three days to that first week. When I started at Harvard Healthcare, I immediately saw a change and it was exciting to say the least. The place I worked before, I was treating three times a week for up to six weeks. And they would make some progress at the beginning of treatment, but then they would fill up in between the days when they weren't being bandaged. They were in the bandages too long, which is not good for their skin care. The benefit for us of seeing a patient five days a week is that they decongest so much faster. There's no backfill. The patient is treated with manual lymph drainage and compression bandaging, coming back the next day and treatment's done again. So that we're making such an impact in that first week, so much so that we can measure for garments a lot sooner and get through treatment a lot faster. I treat patients five days a week and we have for a long time here. Um, I think in the long run, I think that the patient comes for a short period of time so we do five times a week for two weeks, or maybe three, depending on severity. I think we see better outcomes. To treat patients five days a week, I found that they reduce a lot better. They come down and they're much happier with their results. During the evaluation, we may spend 10 minutes trying to convince the patient why it's important to have five days a week treatment. But by the time Friday comes, they're so impressed with their reduction that they're actually concerned about not seeing you on Saturday and Sunday. Something rolled on seems to, yeah, it does, does slip and sometimes can cause pressure in certain areas and the patient ends up taking it off because it's not comfortable. Using the custom half inch foam on the legs and the quarter inch on the arm just seems to fit the patient. We're able to adjust any spots that seem to be cutting in. Using the foam rather than a lesser material seems to reduce the patients at a better rate. The patients definitely have a wow factor that first day when they take the bandaging off. We weren't using 
uh, gray foam at the time. In the beginning, I was using spiral foam. And I was very happy to use spiral foam because it was easy. And I would use it on the arm and, and the leg. But after some time in a different setting, I started using the gray foam. It took a lot of practice. And in the beginning, it was rough. But eventually, um, I could really see a huge difference. It was night and day. The other benefit to the foam is that when the cells are compressed and you're bandaged, when it comes back to shape as your limb reduces, it doesn't fall apart. So it has a lot of structure to it. I use custom cut foam uh, with every patient and the outcome is better. The patient gets better quicker. And actually they come back and say, wow, look at my leg, look at my arm. It's so much better in one day, in two days than it had been in years. When I'm working with the patient and we start using foam with the compression bandaging, I'll always say to the patient, I know it's more work. It's harder, even for me as a therapist, to cut the foam and to fit that to their extremity. But in the end, they're going to decongest faster. They want to be done. They want to reach their goal just as fast as you do. And taking the time to add that makes a big difference. Measuring garments seem like a really daunting task at first, just trying to find the right one, um, is it going to fit? But once we started measuring and just kind of using the ones that we knew first and then progressing and venturing out to other garments, to find the right one wasn't that hard. Measuring and fitting for garments was definitely a change. Historically, we really hadn't done that in our program. We maybe did a few like ready to wear here and there. So it was a little challenging and scary, but I found personally, once you do it and you get to know a particular garment that you like, it's fairly easy. Garments are the most important part of the maintenance phase. So much so that you're talking about it on the initial evaluation. If you measure for your own garments, you can pick the day that's right to measure. When you feel like the patient is most decongested, you don't have to schedule with a fitter, you don't have to work through the patient's schedule, your schedule, and that in turn gets the garment returned to you quicker. So I've been fitting patients with compression garments for several years now, and I'm really happy I went down that road. Even though in the beginning it may be stressful or intimidating, it, it actually makes a lot of sense because it completes the package. It completes the whole treatment process. I think it's beyond beneficial to see a patient every six months. They think they're doing well, which for the most part they are, but everyone needs a little tune-up. There's two things that I think about in the follow-up appointments. One is we bring the patient back and we can take a look at their garment. Is it worn? and then we can order a new garment. That way they're not having a garment that's not effective anymore. The second thing is we can assess how they're doing. Do they need treatment? Do they need to be decongested? And then at that time you can start to institute treatment and deal with something that hasn't really spiraled out of control. I feel like the patients seem like they're happy to know that they're going to be seen again to make sure that they're doing the correct thing. The patients feel a lot more supported with knowing that they're going to continue to see us. I want to make, again, a case for the five-day a week, um, and I want to just go over what is in the literature. So the first thing was there was a study looking at what are American therapists doing? What are, what are we doing? And this was a survey of um, attendees of the NLN conference. 107 responded, and what they said was uh, three, 35% of them were doing three days a week. 26% said they were doing five days a week. And two days a week, 12% responded. Now those of you that are out there know that this, this may not be completely accurate. The, the pool that was surveyed from the NLN and then those that responded are probably kind of best case scenario. But that's what the literature so far has looked at. In the literature, uh, there's been a really nice summary compiled of what's out there in the literature on bandaging by um, the International Lymphedema Framework. And one of the most compelling pieces of evidence that I see in, in that compilation of literature was how quickly pressures decrease in the bandages that you provide for your patients. In only two hours, 
your bandage loses 50% of its compression. Isn't that incredible? 50%? And two-thirds of the pressure is gone in 24 hours. So if your patient is keeping that bandage on for 48 hours, what's it doing in that second day? Nothing. And so the second piece of evidence from the literature states that if you don't have consistent compression on a limb, it refills very, very quickly. So the first really supports the second that without daily bandaging, the patient is going to refill. And the final piece of evidence that is interesting from the International Lymphedema Frameworks project was that when you do five day a week bandaging or CDT, you have the greatest reduction in that first week. Leduc did one study on this with breast cancer related lymphedema. And what he found was in that first week of CDT, when you do it five days a week, the patients were losing about a 50% edema reduction. And in the second week, they really weren't losing much. It was really stabilizing during that second week. Another researcher, Yamamoto in Japan, did a similar study, but with both lower extremity and upper extremity. And he bandaged five days a week, or did CDT five days a week. And similarly, what he found was that 54 to 56% of the swelling went down by day two. The reduction reduced to eight to 11% by day three. And then after that, you have like a one to 3% reduction. And his push was that in Japan, they have so few therapists that if they can see patients like in a week and get them a garment, that's when most of the swelling is going out, he can get them done very, very quickly. The NLN has also written a position paper about CDT that optimally five days a week and getting patients decongested in the shortest amount of time is ideal. But they also wrote in a lymph link a really interesting article about why getting them down in the shortest amount of time is optimal. And when you look at adherence literature on patient adherence, what it shows is that when you have a chronic condition that you're treating, the longer therapy goes, and the longer there's a delay in the benefit, adherence falls off. So if we're treating patients for six, eight, 12 weeks, we shouldn't be surprised when adherence falls off. Whereas if we're seeing patients five days a week for one, two, three weeks, it's a very condensed treatment, and we see more commitment from our patients. From my personal experience with doing five-day-a-week CDT for the last 14 years, I want to tell you some of that. So when Hartford was considering purchasing my company, they spent a year looking at everything, um, including my billing data. And when they looked at my billing data, they found that 11 years of data showed that I was treating patients on average 13 total visits. They were treating patients in their lymphedema program at that time, on average, 17 visits. So one of the arguments I often hear from therapists who don't think they, they could do five-day-a-week ther therapy is that patients aren't going to be able to afford those copays. Insurance isn't going to allow me to see somebody five days a week. But insurance gives you a total number of visits. They don't care if you see them five days a week or two days a week. They're just going to give you a total number. And patients are having less co-pays with this model, not more. It's cheaper, it's quicker, it's more efficient. And in the end, it gets much better results. This is one of my therapists testing the boundaries of her flexibility while bandaged. <laughs> and we all have seen what happens when our patients are in their, gar their bandages for too long. We see the rash, we see the breakdown, we see that that 50% reduction in two hours, those bandages can fall and they can tourniquet. So having them come back in every day is not only gonna help with the refill, but it's gonna protect their skin. Using comprehensive custom paneled foam is also really helpful in getting them down more quickly. Bandaging the feet and the toes. Using a cast shoe so you can accommodate an appropriate bandage on the foot. 
and addressing proximal edema. By ignoring that proximal edema, we're gonna have slower results or lesser results. So these are all the things I found if we can commit to, we can get our patients done more quickly with better results. And that custom cut foam, it's intimidating to some, but one of the things we've done is we've made panels in two or three sizes that are in the cabinet. So when your patient comes, you grab the size that seems to best fit them, and then you just trim it. So maybe it takes five minutes to get that custom foam cut and ready to go. So doing something like that can kind of take away that intimidation factor. This is where I wanted to talk about Professor Foldy. Uh, when I was in Germany, one of the things she asked um, the American therapists that were in this advanced class was, why don't Americans treat the toes? She told the story that many patients from America came to the Foldy Clinic looking for help and their toes had stage three lymphatic changes with papillomas and breakdown. They were getting chronic cellulitis and they were looking to Professor Foldy to fix this situation for them, but there was not much she could do. And she was frustrated, understandably. Why are Americans not addressing the toes? And so this made a very strong impression on me that I was not gonna be one of those therapists and disappoint poor Professor Foldy. Um, but it, you, know, you may not think it's a big deal today, but when they're neglected for three years, five years, 10 years, there's no turning that clock back. Compression garments, I understand. They are overwhelming. It feels chaotic. But I think what I was doing when I was in that rehab hospital years ago is sort of putting blinders on. I didn't want to face the garments. They were too overwhelming. However, you know that patient, you know their limb, you know how quickly did they go down? Did they need extra bandages to reduce? Did they need only a couple? You know that limb intimately. If you're sending them to a pharmacy or DME, they're meeting that patient for the first time. How could they possibly know what that patient needs? They're excellent at measuring, probably better than I am, but they don't know that patient's limb the way that I do. I have to take responsibility for selecting the appropriate garment. I also am trained in ADL status. I know if a patient can reach their feet. I know if they need ADL equipment. This is my responsibility, and without taking on that responsibility, long-term outcome is really impossible. And follow-up appointments. Again, if we look at our healthcare system and we look at the burden that patients have with their co-payments and their co-insurances, we want to catch edema exacerbations before they're, they're requiring two weeks of treatment. If we bring them in every six months, we can help them keep on top of the swelling by treating exacerbations and replacing garments regularly. The other thing that I've seen over the years is I've observed that patients mirror the stages of grief when they're trying to cope with their diagnosis of lymphedema. And in the beginning, in that first episode of care, you're faced with a lot of anger and bitterness and bargaining and depression that you see from this patient. And if you don't have the pleasure of repeating episodes of care with that patient, you don't get the pleasure of seeing them come to a point of acceptance and sometimes even advocacy. And I've actually seen therapists leave the field because they get burnt out on patients that are in those beginning stages, and if you're not doing follow-up appointments, that's usually all you're gonna see are those beginning stages. And that's hard to take after a whole career. And finally, in the literature, it's very strong. Uh, the literature supports creating a therapeutic environment, creating an atmosphere where your patients can um, really enjoy and participate in their treatment. So the second of part of this journey, I've talked to you about five-day-a-week treatment and why I think that is so um, necessary to keep that bandage effective daily. I've talked about using custom cut gray foam to make our treatments most efficient and committing to compression garments, measuring, fitting, and training your patient. And I've talked about having a formalized follow-up program so that patients aren't just left to contact you if something goes wrong. And I hope I've encouraged you to create a therapeutic environment, both for, for the therapist and, and for the patient. So I wanna to introduce to you now, Michelle. She is a patient that uh, experienced three different protocols in CDT, and she's gonna tell you her experience with that.
In 2011, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. I had the surgery, and during the surgery, 50 lymph nodes were removed. After the chemotherapy ended, a couple months after that, I was noticed my right thigh felt strange. I didn't even know how to explain it. It was a feeling I'd never experienced before. I tried to describe it to my oncologist on a couple of follow-up visits, and after the second or third time, uh, she mentioned the word lymphedema. I'd never heard that word before. I was sent for treatment, which uh, was manual lymph drainage, twice a week for about six weeks. And as someone newly diagnosed with lymphedema, I didn't know anything about it, so I trusted that this was the best treatment I could have. I retired in 2013, about a year and a half after the cancer, and left on a boat and went south sailing to the Bahamas and back. And along on the boat went my custom flat knit compression garments, my night garments, and my pneumatic pump. Um, I always tried to do everything I was told I should do to manage this lymphedema. And I went back and another round of six weeks of manual lymph drainage twice a week. And that was my life for a while. Every six months, I'd, I'd do that. And I think I convinced myself that my lymphedema wasn't really that bad. And I tried, I tried not to be as terrified as I really was when I saw the photographs of advanced lymphedema. And I'd been reading about bandaging and wrapping. And I said to the therapist, I said, why wasn't I ever wrapped or bandaged this thing I read about? And this therapist was not my original therapist. And she said, you weren't? And I said, no. And uh, I said, could I be wrapped now? Would it make a difference? Because I had noticed my leg was not getting better. It was slowly getting worse over time. So I saw another therapist who wrapped me for the first time. And that wrapping lasted for two weeks um, from my ankle to the top of my thigh. And uh, then a few months after that, I went off on the boat again for eight months. Uh, while I was away, I had a lot of time to think about lymphedema and how it was changing my life, how I had to be conscious of it every moment. And I was starting to think about whether this was the best treatment whether there was something more that could be done. And I vowed that when I got back home, I was gonna find a doctor, a physician that knew about lymphedema because my oncologist, my primary care physician, all of them had just a surface knowledge about it. And I, I guess they did the best they could. They would write my scripts for therapy whenever I asked, but I felt like I needed someone who knew more. And I, I found someone um, and she, sent me for complete decongestive therapy. She said, this is the only thing that's gonna work. I started another se series of wrapping and this time was really different. It was every day. Um, instead of just gray foam wrapped horizontally around my leg, the foam was fitted and contoured to my leg. The layers of bandaging seemed to be specifically done to fit my my lymphedema, um, my toes were wrapped. They'd never been wrapped before. Um, everything was more meticulous and more carefully done. I felt like more time was allotted, so there was time for the manual lymph drainage and the wrapping, and I felt like um, I was being taught what this was about and how to manage it. And my leg was smaller and softer by the end, and then I was refitted for my, my garments, and I felt like, oh, it took four years, but I felt like I finally found what I needed to do. It wasn't going to go away, but it was more manageable. I think when I reflect back on everything now, I really wish that as someone newly diagnosed with lymphedema, someone had sat me down and looked me straight in the face and said, this is the only thing that's going to work. You need complete decongestive therapy and describe what it is and why it works and why I need it. Um, I would, have, if I had known then what I know now, I would have moved heaven and earth to make that happen. I think as um, lymphedema patients, we need and deserved the best treatment, education, and information from our doctors and our therapists. Because this is, this is for life. There's no way out of it. Um, and it's the only way to get through it and learn to live with it and live the best life you can.
So the final thing I want to talk to you about is the growth that we've experienced at Hartford HealthCare through standardizing our program. So first, uh, the benefits and the growth of our program. Um, you're going to hear from our administrators, because I know sometimes our administrators are not completely behind us. Um, so meet some of our administrators. The dramatic change in going from the maybe twice a week for six to eight weeks to the daily five days a week for two weeks and seeing the significant reduction in, sw in swelling and in fluid and the increase in mobility and how life-changing it is for these people. That word gets out and that's I think what, what grows the program. People hear about those life-changing stories and there's so many people that could benefit from these services and word gets out and the, it gets out to the community, it gets out to friends and family members, it gets out to physicians. So we've seen a lot of benefits from this change of clinical program and I will tell you the first thing is, is that when you can get great results for your patients, they talk about you. They tell everyone that they got results where they've never been able to get it before and they tell their physicians. The respect that you develop with your clinical partners, your providers that are utilizing your services goes a long way. And I'll tell you what, you get patients for life. So you don't end up just treating their lymphedema. You get to treat their ankles, their knees, and their hips, and any other elements. In the new world of, of healthcare, integrated healthcare delivery, you can't just be an episodic care provider. You have to take care of the whole person for all their needs. So we get patients for life now, um, partly because of how we're working this program, the cadence of the care. We get a lot of feedback from our patients a number of ways. We get opportunity to see patient um, experience scores that we measure through Press Ganey. We also have an opportunity to hear from our patients. And with our lymphedema therapist, we get a number of patients that offer feedback. And I've received a number of handwritten very thoughtful letters from patients just describing the care they received, um, the benefit they had from the program, and also the function they were able to restore. Doing the more comprehensive treatment yielded much greater results. We were getting results before, but they weren't the same level. They weren't as life-changing for our, the patients that we were seeing. I think having the better results is, is generating more referrals, and that's generating more revenue. We've been able to um, progressively increase the number of um, locations offering the services. Um, over the past year, we've added five new locations um, that offer lymphedema services. We've nearly doubled the number of um, certified clinicians that we have. Having all of these patients come into our clinics that weren't there before because now we have a lymphedema clinician on site, they also are building trust with us as a company. They see our level of excellence. They trust that we are going to do the best care, the best practice. Um, and so they come back to us for other things. So they may start coming for lymphedema, then they may come back for an orthopedic concern, or they may send their family member in for vestibular or neurological care. They trust us as an organization to do the, the right thing, to do the best thing, and that makes a big difference. The growth of this program under Linda's leadership has been, um, has been steady in incline. Um, year after year, as we've added providers, we've seen that the, the, the physician um, resources in the area recognize the value of what they're doing, and guess what? It becomes a more integral part because the access is improved. When they realize the benefit, um, they get attached to it. And I'm not just talking for cancer care, um, and I'm not just talking for wounds, but I'm also talking for um, orthopedics. Embedding a lymphedema clinician into a clinic that's existing with orthopedic therapists and neurotherapists, um, it's helped educate our fellow clinicians as to what lymphedema clinicians can do. Um, we see a lot of post-operative total knee replacements, for example, and they send them in for the orthopedic care and we're trying to mobilize, we're trying to get range of motion, but the swelling is just blocking it. And I think having the, the lymphedema clinicians on site the orthopedic clinicians are learning, hey, if I can get rid of this swelling, I know I have a lymphedema clinician on site. I'm gonna say, can you see this patient a couple times? And they come back to the orthopedic therapist with a knee that looks so much more like a knee, a patient that is more comfortable, that can tolerate the orthopedic therapy better. And they're getting through our orthopedic care much quicker so the patients are happier, they're returning to their quality of life, and it's helping our outcomes. It's helping our orthopedic outcomes on top of our lymphedema care outcomes.
So I think from a company perspective, certainly we've seen growth um, and every company wants to grow, but I think we've also seen um, better patient experience results. I think patients are better engaged in their um, care. Our staff are better engaged. Our program has grown tremendously from just a few clinicians to now we have 21 um, therapists providing lymphedema care. Um, it's consistent. We are minimizing waste. Um, we're providing the effective care that the patients need at the right time and at the right location. So we have seen tremendous growth. Um, and I think for me, the last 20 years of doing lymphedema, the, the bottom line is good outcomes produces growth. And that's what makes a program successful. We've seen that patients are being treated more efficiently and they're getting less co-pays, less strain on their finances because we're treating them in a much more efficient time. Um, one of the interesting things that came out of a discussion with Dr. Friedman when I was interviewing her for this presentation was that her hospital was looking at um, the cost effectiveness of their program and they looked at cancellation rates. And because her program was so intensive, five times a week for two to three weeks, her patients didn't cancel. They had a much lower cancellation rate than general outpatient orthopedics. So having a more intensive program, patients' adherence does improve. Again, seeing patients less visits overall is less costly to them, their families, and embedding a therapist into an existing orthopedic or neurological clinic provides collaboration that may not have happened otherwise. So we're helping our other clinicians get better outcomes with their orthopedic patients or with their neuro patients. We're seeing our wound programs become very collaborative with us. They want us to help these patients get their wounds closed more quickly. The ER is an interesting collaboration that we're starting to develop. One of our docs mentioned to me that the, one of the most common diagnoses in the ER is cellulitis. And if you've seen Stanley Roxon from Stanford University has on the Learn webpage, if somebody's admitted for cellulitis once, they might have lymphedema. If they're admitted twice for cellulitis, they've got lymphedema. But how many patients are treated for the underlying swelling? And so collaborating with our ERs and providing education for them is a whole new collaboration uh, that, we're, that we're starting to form. And as one of the administrators said, in healthcare, if we can gain patients' confidence and trust, this makes a lymphedema program profitable. We don't need to compare a lymphedema therapist and what money they bring into an orthopedic therapist. We're bringing value to the overall healthcare. So let's talk about growth. Um, this is the growth that we've had from 2017 when we joined Epic to today. The darker blue is upper extremity referral growth and the turquoise blue is our lower extremity growth. We've gone from about 30 to 40 referrals a month to over 130. We've had 220% growth. And again, I think it's a direct reflection of the kind of outcomes that we're getting by committing to this comprehensive model and the collaboration that we're having with all of these other physicians that were really not traditional referral sources, podiatry, vascular, wound care, the ER, so in the past three years, we've gone from having 12 to 21 CLTs on our staff, five to 10 LANA certified therapists. We went from having five facilities that treat lymphedema in Connecticut to now 13 facilities that treat lymphedema. So our model of growth is fairly simple. We create a standard program with those pillars I talked about and that improves the outcomes for our patients. The patients talk and they talk to their physicians and as the physician hears positive reports about their outcomes, the physician then sends more patients. And as he or she sends more patients, we can justify adding additional therapists and opening additional sites. So a final video from um, our administrators I want to talk and focus on how did we how do we standardize a program in such a large institution? How can you guarantee that quality is happening at all the sites?
how do you promote a, uh, a quality care model, which requires so much hands-on time. A lot of providers might say it's too expensive and it's, um, it's not worth doing, and so we're not going to keep it as part of our service line profile. And the way that I look at it is how could you not do it? So Hartford HealthCare is an integrated system of care. We partner with all the medical service lines, and we can't get the results in our wound care program unless we're addressing lymphedema actively. It's all in partnerships, and we work in an integrated healthcare model, and you're managing risk. You can't not do this because it actually creates the success of the medical treatments that the physicians are trying to apply. You can either choose to stay in your silo and say that we would lose money if we did this because it doesn't cover its overhead, or you can look at it in a much broader way and, and see the opportunities. Having lymphedema go into our clinics that were already existing really worked out beautifully. And I have to say, you know, on the onset, I wasn't even sure how it was going to play out. I don't think any of us could really envision your vision, but it has worked out beautifully. And, and if we look at the cost of clinics that we already had existing, bringing a lymphedema clinician into the site, most of the sites, I don't even believe we've had to add rooms or put any money into it. The rooms were already there. So it's just reallocating that room for lymphedema. We already had front office personnel that we're paying. We already had rent. We had all the overhead. So it didn't add expense. And what we were seeing very quickly was almost $200,000 of net revenue annually for one lymphedema clinician being brought in. So we already had a highly effective clinic, or clinics in this case, a system, and this was just added revenue on top of revenue that was already there. So it was like the icing on the cake for us. How do we fit a, a intensive five-day week program within our typical orthopedic um, program? Um, that was one of the initial challenges we had, having the staff recognize there was a different way to treat than the uh, typical two or three times a week we were seeing most patients. But with the right um, focus and structure, uh, we were able to put that together and really um, offer the consistency the patients need so they can get that intensive uh, treatment within our existing programs, but get it at the level they need that five day a week. When Linda first um, presented to us that the best practice was a five day a week program, we were full of doubt and partly because we were used to doing the things the way we always did it. But the clinical results that we've seen with doing it the right way have not been any barrier for our environment, which were designed as general musculoskeletal clinics. When we look at our mission of being most trusted or personalized coordinated care, this really added a component that was adding more comprehensive care for our customers, adding a service that was really needed. I don't think we realized how much it was needed until we started doing it and talking with the community and talking with physicians that were like, oh my gosh, you do that. We, we could use that. We can use that service for our patients. The way that we monitor quality within the system like Hartford Healthcare is we look at um, having consistency, looking at patient reported outcomes, looking at chart audits to make sure our therapists are providing and documenting the care that uh, we see as best. We also look at having opportunities to share best practice among each other. So Linda leads a group of advanced clinicians um, from across our, our enterprise. Um, they represent their different regions and divisions um, and that's where they really um, do the work and lay the foundation for our lymphedema program. They talk about evidence-based best practice, they create clinical standards of care, they develop competencies and action plans to educate our other 21 clinicians who are providing the lymphedema care across the system. That's integral in this lift of making sure that there's compliance and support. So these individuals are going to assist Linda in making sure that everything's being followed and being done the right way and the best way. So because they're local in their regions, they can get out to the sites and do physical audits where they're watching how they're doing it and making sure that they're staying compliant with the guidelines and, and re-explaining the whys I think is important too. I think sometimes our clinicians just get in a a routine of doing things a certain way and, and sometimes it takes someone else to look over and go, oh yeah, we used to do it that way, but this way is better and this is why. So you heard some of the barriers that my administrators mentioned and I hear these barriers when I talk to some of the students in the class that I teach, um, one of them being profitability, that doing lymphedema one-on-one -on -one for an hour is not profitable. But as you heard one of our administrators mention, if you embed a lymphedema therapist into a clinic that the overhead is already paid for, 
that therapist can bring about $200,000 of revenue to that clinic. And each clinic has pressure to grow, and there's only so many orthopedic referrals that you can go after. So adding a niche service like this can be very profitable for our companies. Scheduling, I think, is one of the reasons why so many clinics do see patients two or three times a week. It isn't, it isn't um, easy to get the scheduling department used to scheduling five days a week, and you have to work with your scheduling department. But it is possible, and it can be done. It just requires some training uh, with your scheduling department. The biggest thing I've seen that is needed to do this standardization process is pouring into your staff. They need support, they need training, they need opportunities to learn, um, and I wanna talk a little bit about what we've done to try to provide that for our staff. So first and foremost, as we've talked about, that all of our clinicians now are CLTs, and we're encouraging all of them to become LANA certified. We also provide professional development through the form of quarterly SIGs for the entire team, an annual intensive training where they get more in-depth training every year, and we have a lymphedema team council that can provide local support to our therapists. We have developed a competency that each therapist goes through. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about our competency um, that looks at um, their treatments and their charting. And finally, new site setup is something that I do, and this has become a really effective way of getting a new site off the ground. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that. First of all, um, having only CLTs, I think this just has to be the foundation of a good program. So annual intensive trainings, um, we've done two so far. The first one we did was a two-day intensive training. The first day, we laid a foundation for upper extremity, manual of drainage, bandaging, and garments. And then the second day, we did the same thing for the lower extremity. And this helped our 21 staff just really make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to the basic foundations of comprehensive therapy. The second one we did recently was more advanced topics. And we had a lot of fun. We had a pressure monitor that I know Juzo is showing today. Uh, Gunter was kind enough to loan us his pressure monitor. And we had a lot of fun just looking at how quickly does the pressure drop when you're, when you're bandaged? And are we creating gradient bandages? And how firm, how much pressure are we giving our patients? So it was wonderful feedback for our therapists. The Lymphedema Team Council has probably been the greatest gift that I've been given, and that is a team of therapists who I consider experts in our field that are regionally placed around the state that do the observations for the competencies that we're, we're doing with our staff. They are available for physicians to do in-services. Um, they're available for the staff that are in their local area. And they really help me to figure out where our team needs to go, where our weaknesses are, so that it's not all my perception. Uh, the SIGS quarterly interest groups, these are two-hour meetings that we have with the entire team where we get together and we talk about best practice. We talk about our standardization process. Where are we still weak? We talk about referrals and um, how we can increase referrals to, to meet more demand in our, in our communities and, and meet patient need. The staff competency that we developed, it looks at evaluation. So we observe a therapist doing an evaluation to make sure that we're communicating to our patients about our program pretty consistently. We look at treatments. We look at the manual of drainage to make sure that it's effective. We look at bandaging. And then we do chart reviews. And we're, we're really trying to be good about putting in the chart everything that the patient did during that episode of care so that if the patient goes to another therapist, it's a seamless transition. New site setup model has been um, a really cool way to set up a new site, and that's me moving in. I come into the site, I buy all the equipment with somebody else's money, which is really fun. Um, I get samples from the vendors. I work with the front desk staff so they can really understand what it means to support a lymphedema therapist. I train the other therapists uh, that are on staff so that we can collaborate, so they know exactly what it is a lymphedema therapist does. And then I start treating. And I treat for two, three months, and I build up referrals. And I get that clinic on solid ground. And once it's on solid ground, I hire a therapist, and I spend time with her. She observes me for about a week. 
watching me do CDT, and then I turn around and I watch her for about a week, um, or more if she needs it. And so when I leave that site, it is on solid foundation, and this therapist doesn't know any other way to do it. This is just the way the clinic runs. And I've found that this has been just indispensable in standardizing our program and really getting each site to do the best and most effective form of CDT. Finally, we have a Connecticut consortium of lymphedema therapists, which is not just for Hartford Healthcare, it's for the entire state. We really want to provide opportunities for all providers in Connecticut to um, raise the bar and provide the best care for patients with lymphedema. Maureen, you might recognize Maureen Macbeth. She recently came out and, and talked to our group. So this third section and final section of my talk, I've shared with you the benefits of standardizing a lymphedema program, the growth that we've seen by committing to five-day week therapy, by providing garments and training patients on how to use those garments, and doing regular follow-ups. So we still have tons of work to do. I've only been there three years, and we've just scratched the surface, I think. Uh, we're going to continue the standardization pro program. I want more clinics open in Connecticut. I really want um, patients to not have to travel more than 20 minutes to get to a clinic. We also really want to work on improving our breast cancer-related lymphedema surveillance program. I've been encouraged by, um, I saw the, the talk today, it was just wonderful about that program, and, and Hartford wants to commit to that. I'm also really excited about collaborating. I've already started the process with both our nutrition department and our psychology department. And we're meeting again next week. I was shocked how open and willing they were to collaborate with me. They've developed an eight to 10 week support group for our patients with lymphedema that goes through grief, uh, stages of grief and body image, um, things like that. And we're gonna use the LLIS scores to identify our patients that would most benefit from this kind of referral. And then we're gonna use BMI to refer to our dietary department. And I think what I'm learning is that I don't have to do everything. There's departments that are already out there that can do this with me. And so that's something that we're gonna be um, developing in the next year. We also work with a data collection company called Intermountain, and they have a data collection called ROMS, and lymphedema is being loaded into that. I've been working with them trying to get lymphedema up and running so that we can really look at outcome data from site to site and from state to state and how we're really performing in our outcomes with lymphedema patients. And again, just trying to raise awareness, both in Connecticut and beyond, on the need for us to provide the best care for our patients. So tonight, I've shared with you my own journey of treatment protocols. Um, I've tried to make a case for a comprehensive treatment protocol. And um, I've shared with you some of the benefits and the growth that we've seen by getting excellent <laughs> outcomes for our patients. And I'm hoping it encourages uh, us as a country to really go back to our roots, back to what we were taught in our classes, to provide the best and most effective outcomes for our patients and go back to the future. Thank you.